Hello, this is Dr. Kevin Kirk, and I'm going to be making a potato. Well, the potato for a Mr. Potato Head game. This is going to be the first part. I'm just going to make a potato, I'm starting with a box, not a sphere. A sphere concentrates the points at the poles, which are the top or the bottom. We don't want to do that. So I'll start off with a box, and I don't want it to be square. So I'll add a modifier here, we'll do a mesh smooth. A mesh smooth will make it nice and literally smoothed out. I'll do a collapse all just to drop it down to the base form. Yes. And here we go. Hit the F2s, F3s, F4s to display the way you want. I'll go ahead and hit J to get rid of that guide box and G to get rid of the grid. That's just how I prefer to work. Zoom in a little bit. Take a look. Okay, this isn't quite a potato. So I'll play this a little bit. Open it up. Maybe I'll grab the top polygons here. I think I'll do this. Grab them. And I don't have ignore back face, so I can catch the whole thing. And I'll do an extrude. So I'll bring the potato up a bit, maybe up a bit twice. And that looks a lot more kind of sort of like a potato. All right, that's basically kind of it. We've got our potato. It's not too much more to potatoes. So I have my nice little potato here. Now if I want to break it up a bit, I can. I can do another mesh smooth, make it more smooth. But I probably want to change the basic form of this kind of grab some of the vertices, pull some out, push them in, and make it look a little less predictable. So I'll just very quickly move a few things and make it not such a predictable, boring potato, like potatoes usually are. So I'll move things around a bit. All I'm doing is grabbing, moving some points, so I won't have your boring potato here. There are a lot of ways to do this. Incidentally, there are different things you could do, such as freeform deformers, things like that. But I'm just kind of oh, it's one ugly potato. Let's grab this, bring it up a bit more. Maybe bring these parts down a little bit. I think I'll bring this whole thing over a little bit. Oh, jeez, poor potato. Um, ugh. Let's bring this in. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with this, I suppose. And this little, yeah, that's pretty ridiculous looking. I think I'm gonna bring this point in a bit. All right. Okay, that's a bit too straight there. Break it up when you can. Too straight means it's just not quite natural. I'm going to up a little more too, I think. All right, fine. So I just played around and made a basic potato. When I'm done with this, I want to, of course, hit it with another mesh smooth. Make sure it's all okay. So I'll drop a mesh smooth on top of this. There it is. Okay, so there's my potato. Let's check it around. It looks really, really boring. All right, a few things I could do. I'm going to go ahead and collapse all. There, potato is now collapsed. Yes, great. I have a lot of points here. That's fun. And you know, another way to do it, and I think I'm going to show you this method too, is with the vertices. So feel free to move this around. And I'm just going to use a soft selection tool. I will use this. I'll grab a point or two or three or whatever. Uh, tools pretty much set very high. So I'll bring this down. It's almost a rainbow kind of thing. I can pull out parts and it pulls out the points around it. Actually, I take that back. I'll bring this up a bit higher. So I can start to shape the whole potato at once, bring out bits and pieces of it to affect the whole thing. So it won't look so predictable and boring. So it'll bulge out in some places and not in others. Maybe a bit further down here. Okay, you know what? That's pretty much fine. I'm happy with this as a potato. I okay, I'm done. There's there's almost there's my potato and I'm proud. Okay, good. So there's my potato. Great. Looks like a weird jelly bean. And that's it. I made the potato. If I want to do another mesh smooth, I can, and I'll tell you why. We don't need to worry about the polygon count too much on here. So I'll just do mesh smooth because it's just going to be a straight picture. That's it. That's all we need from this one picture. So I'll hit it with another mesh smooth. I can even bring the iterations up. Remember, every time you bring the iterations up, you're multiplying the effective polygon count by four. I'll hit an F9 and kind of render the picture. If I can, and see what we get. And there we go. A simple potato. Looks very boring because it is very boring. Now I'm going to start to make the picture of this potato, and I can add a light if I want and so forth, or I can just use a regular default lighting. Depends what you're after and the realism you're after, but let's splash a texture on this thing. 
So I'll hit it with the material editor. And I'll grab something. I'll just do a regular standard material because I don't think there's a professional potato texture in there. And then I'll assign material to the selection. So it should be a nice gray potato. That's fine. And I want the color to change. To kind of have a little potato darkish, more light kind of tan-ish potato color. I can use different things. I'll just use a noise map for this. Maybe that would be good. I'll drag, drag this into the color, diffuse color. Double click on this. That's once again the noise map here. So I'll double click it so I can see the colors here. I want to change this out and make it more potato friendly. Make it more potato-ish color. Potato-ish. Whatever potato colors are. So I'll try to find, I guess that's pretty close. Maybe a bit too yellowish, orangish, but something around there. That's fine. And then a little darker. I can cheat here. I can copy this. I can paste it down here, which gives me a good color to begin with. And then bring it much, much deeper, richer. That's really not very potato-ish looking, but you get the idea. So if I start this, now I don't know what my scale is going to be. And it doesn't look like it's changed at all. So I'll bring the size way down. Let's see if that changes anything. And yeah, I'm starting to get some potato-ish look to this. Let's go zoom in on this. Ah, that was weird. Okay. Let's zoom in on this thing and see if we can get a better look. Okay, we do have some of the potato colorings in there, and I want to bring that size down quite a bit more. So do this again. And in the noise map, I'll bring the size down. It's now set at five. I'll bring it down to about two, I suppose. That's fine. Hit it again. I think I want these colors a bit different, a bit more dramatic. Slightly. I'll exaggerate a lot so you can see how's that. And I'll render it. Yeah, it's too tight, so I'll bring this out a little bit more. Maybe about a four. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so it has some potatoes. It's got some dark spots in there. Maybe the dark spots aren't quite dark enough. So I'll darken that up a bit. See what we got, just so you can see it. Okay. So I got the base for my potato. Now I can cheat on this too. And I can copy this noise map out if I wanted to, and I'll do that. I'm just holding down the shift key, copying it out. I'm going to drop that into the bump map. Now if I drop it into the bump map, it's going to look like it's a little more bumpy for a potato. I'll change a few things here. I want to change the size, move it over a bit. Maybe the tiling, whatever, so I can move it over a little bit and not have it look like it's in the same exact spot. If I change the size, that'll do it. I want to change the darkness, the contrast between these two colors. There, now I've got a bumpy, lumpy kind of potato. Maybe I want to bring this up a little bit for the size. And I can also adjust it over here in the bump itself, in the maps. If I open the maps up, the bump can go up. It's right now set for 30. I'll bring it up quite a bit, for example. And here we go, nice, bumpy, lumpy potato. There we go. So for now, that's a good bumpy, lumpy potato. I don't like the curve here. That's not very good. But for the texture, I think I'm okay. Darken this a little bit more, even. And you get the idea. You can add things, you can change things. You can rotate this tater, which I'm going to do a little bit. And there we go. So I've got this nice lumpy potato. I don't like that end still, so I'll rotate it just a little bit more. And this should work better. Okay, so I've got this nice little potato, and it's all ready. When you've got this, if you're going to put it into the flash game, which is what we're intending. Geez, that looks like a kind of bad pancake or something. Let's try this again. When you're done with this, the thing to keep in mind is you want to save it. And when you save it, you want to save it out as a different file format. You want to save it out. Where's my potatoes? Oh, it's Mr. Potato, I forgot. Yeah, I'll find that out. Anyway, I'll just save it here. But you want to save it out as a ping file, a PNG file. When you save it as a ping, that's great. Save it out. Call Tater Body on. When you save it out, you want to save it as a ping, and you're going to go for the red, green, blue 24 bit, and that's going to save it out with an alpha channel. If it has an alpha channel, 
it's going to be clear, transparent, and you're not going to see the background. So I can pop it into Flash and have a good looking potato. This one looks pretty ratty, but a good looking potato with no background. That's critical because you want to be able to put objects on top of the potato and not have the potato hide any of the objects or the objects hide the potato. And that's how I make the base. You can do the same technique for arms, legs, hands, anything. But this is the base for making the potato head body for your Mr. Potato Head game.